All right, let's get on with this then. Okay, let's make some music. What are these levels like? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just make a beat in the quick way that I usually would, using absolute basic Ableton, like this is just some shit off Splice, and that's it. I'll try to keep like half an eye on the stream chat thing. So ask questions if you want, but I might have to sort of pause it at some point. I can't really multitask, it's not my, not my best thing. There's some like modal jazz thing I saved the other day that I wanted to use as a starting point. Um, uh, let me just. Yeah, this thing. What I tend to do if you see it, like, I've, I just have like a collection of stuff that I, I just always add to and then I can just pull from really quickly. And this was something, oh, you, yeah. Bit loud. Um, everything's working all right here though, right? I, can everyone just say like yes in the chat or something? The level's okay. Nice. Thank you, my guys. All right, cool. Um, This template set that I've got here is just like, I always have the same stuff ready. Shit, I'm just gonna like... Turn the music down a bit, it's kind of distracting. I'll always just have a basic um, kick and snare thing ready to go, just so I know what I'm hanging it off. This is anxiety inducing already, which we love. <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to work out, obviously. Whenever I pluck anything out of Splice or anything like that, I'll probably manipulate it to the point where you don't know where it came from and yeah, you'll see. You just gotta start somewhere, haven't you? I don't know what's going to harmonise with this at all. 
This might not have been the best idea. <laughs> Yeah, big up Frank Zappa. I think that's why I wanted to use it. I haven't done anything like this in ages. Um, so now I've got... something roughly happening I'll try and like work out what's going to play with that in terms of harmony and stuff just in a basic way Let's see what I've saved as favourites in advance Good job of just easing everyone in with a nice nightmare beat. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I'm just trying to cut all the like decay and effects off this. Probably should have picked something a bit more basic. I kind of know where this is going. Mm. Isn't it? Um, I'm quite new to this Arturia stuff. I don't know where they bury all the settings and shit. Uh, that doesn't do anything, which is good. Get rid of that and duplicate this. I'm gonna have to um like freeze quite a lot of stuff as we go because like the CPU of Ableton and the stream is probably gonna get a bit crazy. So I wouldn't usually be doing this. I think we can leave that original sample out for now. I don't know if I'm gonna use that. Stereo. I 
I'm always quite particular about what harmony I'm hearing. Like, I don't know if this is quite it yet, but like, I'll know when it when it sits right. And I don't bother playing anything in. It's like mouse clicks all the way. I suppose if I was doing this in like a session with another writer, like lyric writer, top line writer, this is when they're like throwing ideas around with melody and stuff like that, and I'd probably stop and you know record ideas in as we go. But just me, so I'm just gonna bosh through this at lightning speed. Um, it's a way of getting, I don't know if it's obvious what I'm doing here, but um, just having two duplicates of the same synth and then just having the melodies kind of pull apart. So they might be in unison, but then uh, then they pull apart, it'd just be mega wide sounding. Just on one of those, like, everything sounds like a sort of theme tune vibe right now. It's just like superhero music, in it. We need some, like, wailing guitar over the top. What are you saying in the uh, comments, then? I'm gonna try... No, I can't really multitask here. Crazy how quick you... It'll get quicker, this is the slow bit. Like once I've got a foundation down, then things can get super quick. Sometimes I'll get a bit carried away with like this early harmony stuff and I, I'm going to kind of pull back a bit because I think I want other instrumental elements and they can pick up that extra depth of harmony or whatever so this is probably almost getting a bit too harmonically rich or whatever. Yeah, apologies for this, <laughs> the drums. Bear with, it's just something to hang off right now. Might put some uh, like note bends in a minute. I'm kind of into doing that all the time at the minute.
Yeah, if you know that you're gonna end up like having a drum heavy. I can't do anything that's not minor key. I'm just reading some comments here. I can't do anything that's not minor key. I just won't enjoy it otherwise. Maybe like pff, one in a hundred things I'll start are not minor. Um, I'm just gonna go back. Even if I don't use it, it served its purpose. Um, Cause I quite like this synth thing. That's cool, so. Just getting started with something. See if we can make these drums a bit more interesting. I always have like a load of kicks. I like the sound of just ready to go. Just gotta find that right level of wonk. <laughs> with the guitar but I don't mm. it's probably not the best idea like building this off the guitar rhythm because I don't mm -mm. Um, yeah, we're just getting the synth pumping off the bass drum, because why not? Sounds like that kind of synth that wants to like, if I just left it, it would just probably overpower the whole mix and I can kind of get it out of the way a little bit if it binded to the drums. Yeah, I'm just going to fuck off that guitar part for now. Find something a bit more obnoxious for the snare. Mm, I sort of want something a bit like darker with the snare. Almost a bit more. Mm. I'm adjusting the pitch envelope here so it sort of um, has a spikier attack shall we say. Tuning it up a bit. Little bit of FM, blend that in. I don't know, this sounds all right. I'm it's ended up being quite a niche snare that I don't know is really gonna carry it, but I want it in there somewhere. If in doubt, put OTT on everything. Yeah, I'm going to try and explain what I'm doing here, but I kind of just need to go with it, really. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for a certain je ne sais quoi here that I'm not 
got preloaded. <laughs> the next hit. Oh. OTT is uh, just an Ableton preset, it's just a brutal multi-band compressor. Um, same principle with the snare, like, of um, really quick, spontaneous, not overthinking anything. Then you go away and you forget about it and come back and then you'll know if it's worth developing. Um, I just want to catch some spontaneous, like, you know, whatever. So it's the type of thing where there's a really fine line of like where you can get away with wonkiness in the 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 hi hats. And sometimes when I'm just working on this individually, like the hi hats, it I'll overdo it and then. Worth noting that I'm kind of approaching this a bit like this is going to be the noisiest, biggest, like most intense section of the song. Maybe it'll be a chorus or, you know, the, the main bit. And then it's so easy just to chop bits out and rearrange and like slip in a different chord or whatever, simplify things. Um, what were we saying? Um, the snare will be staying because it sounds shit and that's, that's what I like to go for. So yeah, quite often when like you've been working on all these things together and then I just drop those simps out and it's like, fuck yeah, I mean that's kind of that could be a verse in itself. Uh, this plugin's great. Um, I don't know, it's just um, distortions. I go through a lot, but I used to capitator a lot, the sound toys things for years, but now that fat rate is good for. I like it on bassy things. Um, I tend to look for 
stupid sounding 808s at the minute and have got a bunch of pre-organised things. But like everything else, I'll just throw this in and then um, mess around a bit for ages. I don't really want something so sustained, but having that sustain at least, like, will help sculpt. Is it in tune? It is in tune. Always check that. My massive face is probably in the way of what I'm doing here, but I'm just messing with the pitch envelope. As you, I don't want to, if you overdo it though, it, you're gonna fuck with the, uh, the tuning next to the other instrument, so. It, I just like it. It just sounds a bit futuristic, all that shit, just to get it, like, you know. Um, and here, what I'm doing is just uh, giving myself the option if I want to, like, indefinitely sustain it, then it will loop background on itself. But I think with this, I'd want it to be quite staccato anyway. Uh -uh. <sighs> I don't know what my hearing is the actual root note here. <laughs> Usually I'd recommend um, building your bass melodies in a higher octave, but this is so distorted you can kind of hear it. Um, and yeah, I guess it's worth being aware of, in this case, what the kick's doing already. Sometimes I'll do this bit first and then put the kick over that, but here we are. Um, and the, I guess the kick's quite busy already, so kind of need to be a bit mindful of that here. Not that I do anything with any sense of minimalism, so whatever. Spending longer on this than I usually would because I suppose I've, I'm being a bit, um, being a bit reckless with this uh, 808 sound, and <laughs> yeah, the sound of a drill isn't gonna sit with everything. That's sort of, that kind of works out. Yeah, I mean that like purring kind of thing is. Just, yeah, I just want it sporadically.
<laughs> Worth noting that actually, if if I was working on this with the mind of it being one of my own songs, I probably would throw in some like sketch vocals or something, just make myself put some shit in there, because the earlier I think you can get vocals in, the better. But I'm not set up for that, I'm not about to do my own weird shit singing for everyone, so... that last little phrase to work with the synth. This bass sub thing is like something I made ages ago that I put on every bass. It just makes it wide and horrible sounding. I'm just hearing a clap in here. I think yeah, maybe that snare by itself is kind of getting annoying. That'll do. Do you mostly use guitar samples to record some yourself? Um, if I'm recording guitar at the end of something, a track where it's like, this needs guitar, then yeah, I'll play it in myself, but uh, something like this, I did start with a guitar sample, I'm, I don't know, I'm not precious. It's more if I've got something very specific, then I will play it myself. But I don't feel the need to play anything live unless it requires it. I'm not, it makes no difference to me. Yeah, that's hitting. Banking the master output here. If you want to make something just sound a bit like, you know, like I'm doing my own thing with it, just whack a bit of chorus on it. Yeah, I mean, this sort of works. Gonna address this um, guitar situation though. We've been putting it off long enough. I love this plugin. It was a bit of an accidental find years ago, but it makes everything sound horrible in the best of ways. Um, the, the speaker emulation on it, like the convolution algorithms are really good on this thing. I, I'm not doing it now, but it, it makes stuff sound like it's behind you. It's, yeah, I don't know if it's meant to, but it's got some really good um, stuff on there. Then auto pan, if you don't use it as a panner, but just as a, um, I guess a tremolo effect. Then bring back the amount. You can get it 
sitting with the rhythm a bit like you would with like um, like pumping compression or whatever. Yeah, that, that's serving a bit more of a rhythmic like purpose now. I think that keys part is not violent enough. It's kind of one of those tracks we're just going we're going hard now I guess. This is how it goes. Camel Crusher great for violent But also, I guess it's just like a bit of an um, exciter, um, like fizzing up the top end. Just seeing if these drums need to be doing like as much. So what, what I'm going to do here is um, something I've been doing recently is using that decimal, like, it's a bit reducing plugin or whatever, but it just distorts quite well. And if you, like, EQ into it or something quite powerful, like the pull tech thing here, you can just get the right bits poking out in the distortion. But I'm trying to find the sort of sweet spot where it, obviously pumping it hard to find but yeah could simplify this a bit now, I think. As things build up, I'm always trying to subtract at the same time and let things have a bit more development. Like, I've not been doing it so much with this one. It's not been that disciplined because I'm totally winging this, but like, um, it's just as important to, to, in my opinion, to stack horizontally as it is ver vertically. Like, otherwise you're losing sight of the song as a whole. So I will start like copy pasting some shit in a minute. I fucked that up but actually that's quite useful. I'm just like a little little jump at the start there. Right, keep up. Let's let's go. It's just what's the time? Right. Duplicate some shit. We'll call this a verse. Simplify the bass. Da da da. And we're in the chorus. Everybody sing along. take more of this kick out let it breathe a bit more
I mean, this is kind of like a very uh, stompy vibe, so we might as well run with that. I suppose then, if this just goes along on the on the one, then the chorus will pick up more. You see. At this point, I'll probably just start like chopping bits out of it quite ruthlessly, because especially at the end of sections, I can all, it can all get a bit flatlined if you're not careful, and yeah, silence can be useful. Nothing says like we've lifted into a chorus, like just a little subtle bit of white noise, make it nice and wide. It's just gonna tickle your ear and make you like subliminally like think, oh shit, right? Chorus. You know, without it being something obvious like a crash or whatever. Um, I'm just trying to put a little bit of movement on this like steam fizzy kind of thing like with some chorus just so it evolves over time. hearing that steam so we can hear it. The chorus effect kind of dulled it down a bit so I'm just putting that back in. Um, something I quite often do is just like if there's a, a snare layer that I can uh, put a variation on in the verse, I will. in terms of arrangement. Because at this point, I'm just focusing on how it moves from one section to the other. Like, there's plenty of noise going on now. Um, yeah, it's like that same modal jazz stuff that we started with. I know there's some, yeah, I think it's that one that I wanted to use. And this is just like a come up with some weird intro kind of bullshit, like where, uh, you know, in my style, it will be totally unrelated. It just grabs your attention and then the beat drops. But like most things, I will do something with it. I don't like think you should feel like you have to, but in this case, I want it to feel like it's a bit more affected and it's gonna like build into the drop. So 
I'll get on a little bit of um, a little bit of sound design. Comb filter, resonance, automate that shit. Future sounds. I'm just trying to get it so it sounds like it kind of pinches and then it'll be like a crescendo into the beat. So yeah, this is automating the uh, a comb filter, like the frequency of it. It's revealing my uh, signature sound that I literally put on everything here. I have my twinkles. Also, I feel like in this case it sort of adds that little bit of like um, the right in that top end there. Two sections make absolutely no sense, but sort of work. <laughs> Just like anticipate the beat a bit with something else, like drag it backwards. Um, right, right, let's move. Let's go, speed things up. What? Yeah, we like that. It's got some energy in it. <laughs> um, I kind of get into a bit of a manic state when I'm at this point now. This I'm. Um, uh, I just need to go with this, so I probably won't be able to explain all of this. Trying to find a, a pitch that works a bit better with that. Um Getting like a, a charm, like a human voice in there somewhere, even if, I mean, this is quite loud at the minute, but if you just bury that, like, it will make anything sound way more hype straight away. You know, it just triggers something in your brain, doesn't it? Nice. 
keep repitching everything till you've got an elephant. <laughs> Now this is kind of an obvious like the chorus type section. I just want to, like the hats to tie it all together a little bit more than they are. This is just the easiest cheat at this point in music production, just throw in some glitchy fills. Make anything sound instantly fucking modern. <laughs> I think if you're doing this kind of music, if it's if it's not funny, then you're doing it wrong. So just having some of these glitchy things just like uh, just poke out from the rest of the beat and it's just like little moments to you know punctuate things a bit more dynamic and that um i want to find a vocal thing for the chorus that can just act like a almost a bit of a hook but in the background and i might chop it out later but it might kind of inspire some vocal ideas at some point. Bear with me, I just need to tune this. Yeah, rave. <laughs> well, that with like that um, drum and bass synth has kind of worked. We've gone like music for the Jewish generation. Pitch up the very first bit just so it pokes through a bit. There you go.
get that nice and wide. Since everything is distorted in this track, why stop now? Fleshing out that sort of signature weird intro that I have to do. Gotta set the scene. really specific hi-hat that I'm just hearing. <laughs> Um, I guess this is just about dynamics again. thinking how I'd come out of this chorus in a bit more of an interesting way here. Oh, there you go, copy paste, it's looking like a song. Um, I think we are pretty much done here. I think that'll do. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.